Yeah. <laughs> right. Get the lug nuts off the floor. <laughs> That's it was great. Right. Pretty wild time, right? It was insane. It was heart stopping. Yeah. You know? it, was, yeah. it was amazing. I think it was. It was just exciting. They finally got some entertainment in politics. I think that's why everybody's interested, you know, because exactly. it's almost as good as who wants to be a millionaire. And, and every vote counts, certainly. <laughs> yeah, it does. Proven this more this than definitely ever. proved that. Yeah. Also with us from Bloomberg News, Jonathan Capehart. Jonathan, you've been out there all year long. Uh, let me ask you about Florida being called so early and then being taken away. How does something like that happen? Well, there's this thing called the Voter News Service, and it's right. a a coalition of the AP and the major networks and they have people all around the country interviewing people coming out of the polls, these so-called exit polls, and then somehow they take this raw information and use some statistical formulas that I, you know, I almost failed statistics in college, so I don't know what they do, but in the end they then give the information to the anchors and they go and say California for Gore or Nevada for Bush, but in Florida what happened was they got a bum sample in one of the counties. And that skewed it. So at one point, you know, they call it for Gore. Right. Then they say, as you said before, psych, and took it back. Right. Then they call it for Bush, and then realize psych again, and they took it back. And so now we're as we're all sitting here waiting to find out, you know, whether Florida goes to Bush or to Gore. Both guys need it in order to win. Yeah. Well, we'll see. The drama continues, and the show continues as well. Election 2000 unwrapped. When we return, we'll take a look at whether our choose or lose efforts paid off this year. In other words, how many young voters actually went out to the polls on Tuesday. And also we'll talk about why no matter what happens with this election, there are Democrats all over this country cursing a guy named Ralph. Stick around. Well, I think that since the two candidates were virtually indistinguishable, it's not all a surprise that the votes they received were virtually, you know, indistinguishable. And we are back with Choose or Lose, Election 2000 Unwrapped, just trying to make some sense out of this pretty crazy election week. But first up, you know, Choose or Lose is all about motivating young people to get involved, get out there, register and vote. And Gideon, you got more on that right now, right? Well, this year, over 17 million 18 to 29-year-olds actually took part in this historic vote. So what was it like to go to the ballot box on Election Day? Well, we sent Jason and Julia out to check it out. So take a look. Why are you here today? What are you doing? It's actually the first time I'm voting. I have to have my opinion out. I mean, I'm 18, I'm growing up. Is there one particular issue that brought you out to the polls this morning? Um, racial profile. Uh, the Supreme Court, I think it's a big deal. Abortion, gay rights. The military foreign policy. I think abortion and women's um, free choice. I see more younger and younger people voting, so the more younger people that vote, the more difference it makes. This is probably one of the most important things you can do. This is a tough choice for everybody, but uh, everybody's got to vote according to their conscience, you know. Because it's so close, every vote counts. I think that people that don't vote have no right to complain about the government. Well, that is how things looked in New York. Meantime, Erica, you saw a pretty impressive turnout in Nashville, right? I did. I was totally amazed. I, we went up to a polling place where there were lines of people. I'm like, oh, they're giving something away free. There's no way, heck, you know, all these kids are lined up and they were standing in line in the hot sun for, you know, some of them two and a half hours all to get an opportunity to vote. It was incredible. I was so proud and, like, completely vindicated in this whole yeah. year of us trying to get that message out to so many young people. So it's been yeah. great. That's awesome. Meantime, the numbers, uh, reports are that 17.8 million 18 to 29 year olds turned out to the polls on Tuesday. That is up about 2 million from the 15.6 million who voted in 1996. John, what do you think of that? Are you surprised at those numbers? Encouraged? Yeah, it's encouraging. I think it's got a long way to go still. Yeah. So. Among your friends, do you know people that maybe weren't so into politics that are now at least interested in it? Yeah, I, th I think more in this election than ones in the past, you know. Um, you know, because of the Supreme Court appointments and stuff, I think a lot of people were more interested in this because it's going to affect what goes on in this country for a long time after Bush or Gore is gone. Right. Jonathan, getting back to this election, now God knows anything could still happen, but the way things look at the moment, uh, it's very possible that uh, Gore could end up winning the popular vote and Bush taking the electoral vote and the presidency. If that happens, what do you think is going to happen with the Electoral College in the next four years? Will it get a second look? you think there will be a movement to do away with it? I think it, it'll get a second look, but I think...